So you want to get your first NFED half wave. What are my multimeter recommendations? And we've got an ATOS antenna on a balcony that won't stop tuning this time on Mailbag Monday. Well, hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike KNMRD. If you have amateur radio related questions for me, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. K8MRD at iCloud.com. We've got some great things to talk about this week. So let's dive right in with the first question. This viewer writes, sorry to bother you. You're not bothering me at all. I literally have a weekly show where I encourage people to email me. Uh, (laughs) I just passed my tech test, congratulations, and got my call signed a little over a week ago. That's awesome. Got a Zygu G90 because of your video with the shopping cart. Excellent. Excellent. So my question is, am I, uh, I'm really liking POTA, but want to get an NFED half wave. Which one would you recommend? Any advice would be much appreciated. I'm also from Texas, so I hope to get a reply. Thank you for all you do for this hobby. You don't have to be from Texas to get a reply, but it does help. So we've answered this question a lot on this channel, uh, but it's kind of important to reverberate these things because we get new viewers and new hams like this gentleman, uh, all the time. So my number one favorite antenna in the world as far as NFED half waves are concerned is going to be the Pactenna 49 to 1. Now this is different than what you'll get. I've modified it. I've put different wire on it and stuff um, and I've made many videos about this but Pactenna by far number one choice for NFED half waves. Now there are people who cry and say oh they're always sold out you have to go to their groups.io page and sign up so you get emails when George makes new antennas because these things are so darn popular, they're always sold out. So you got to get in line, you got to get on the email list, and George will let you know when they're available. There's a reason they're always sold out because they're that popular, okay? Pactenna, number one. Next, I want to give a shout out to the Cartena guys, Coffee and Ham Radios. This is the Cartena uh, Apollo. Let's go to their website because I can't remember which one this is. So we go to coffeeandhamradios.com and here we can click on catalog. Uh, It is the Apollo. This is the one that I have. Now, this is a kit. You, You wrap the toroid with magnet wire. You solder some stuff. I've done videos on every single one of these antennas that I'm going to show you. But this antenna is freaking awesome. Now, because you have a G90, if you're going with one of the coffee and ham radios, a 9 to 1 would really be a good antenna for you. So you could get this Cartena Aries. This is a 9 to 1 where it's not going to be resonant on every band. That's where you're going to rely on the tuner for the G90. But it'll tune anything. So you can you can get away with a little bit shorter wire. Like mine's like 41 feet, my 9 to 1s. And you just use the G90's tuner to uh, sweeten it up and get it resonant. It's awesome. They also have this Poseidon antenna. This is a, a Ribikoff antenna where you only need a 25 foot radiating radiating element with four 17 foot radials. So any one of these antennas from Coffee and Ham Radios, again, they're all kits, so you gotta build it, but they are very, very good antennas. Next on my list, 10 tennas, T-E-N-N, tennas. Walt, November Echo 4 Tango November out of Tennessee makes these. He's got three different versions. This is the small one that will handle up to 25 watts. So it should be perfect for your your, uh, G90. This is like 38 bucks. Then there's a 100 watt version that's like 40 bucks. And then there's a bigger version that's like 45 bucks. Tentennas are what I use at home. I have two of them strung above my house. That's how much I like them. So tentennas, you buy the transformer and you're, you just put on your own wire and cut it to length, okay? Getting back to the 9 to 1, because you could do a 9 to 1. So again, Pactenna has a 9 to 1. The black wire here is the radiating element. That's what it comes with. And then the yellow wire here, this is just 26 gauge soda beams wire that I'm using for a counterpoise. All this yellow wire is soda beams wire. So either a Pactenna NFED half wave or a Pactenna 9 to 1 or both, you're, you're great. But what if you want to get two birds stoned at once? I recently reviewed an antenna called 
the dually, okay? This, this antenna is freaking awesome. Again, it's a kit, you gotta build it all yourself, but you have a 49 to one N-fed half wave on one side, and then you have a nine to one on the other. And you can, you can link these. So like I made a link for 41 feet that I use for the nine to one side. And then I have the rest of the wire that I'll connect to that if I wanna use the 49 to one side. With any of these 49 to ones, if you cut your antenna to 40 meters, you're gonna get 20, uh, 40, 20, 15, and 10 just naturally. But I like to do links to get more bands and I've done plenty of videos on that. So them's my suggestions, pack tenna, coffee and ham radios, 10 tennas, or the dually. I will put links for all of these in the description. They're not affiliate, they're just links to, there you are, go buy them. So hopefully that helps. Congratulations on getting into uh, amateur radio and I hope to catch you on the wave sometime. Thanks for writing in. Next we have a question that came over from one of my patrons. This viewer says, hope you are finishing up a great weekend. Well, I'm recording this on Friday, so <laughs> we'll see how it goes uh, in a few days. Both my analog 40 plus years old and digital multimeters have died. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so do you have a recommendation for one to replace them? Maybe, maybe part of a Mailbag Monday segment. Well, here is that part. So yes, I do. I have uh, several multimeters that I use. None of them are very expensive. Uh, I don't have any flukes or anything like that. I'm an amateur. I don't need anything that fancy. So let's hop over to that workbench and I will show you what I use. So I use a variety of different meters depending on where I am and what I'm doing, but primarily uh, when I'm at home anyway, this multimeter from Klein Tools, this is the MM600. This is my main workhorse. I bought this at Home Depot years ago, I think right after I moved to Texas, and this is what I use for testing everything uh, voltage and continuity wise. So. It works great, it's accurate. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it, it's not actually auto sensing, so right now it's on AC. When you turn it to voltage, it goes to AC. So I have to push this select button to get it to DC, but it's accurate enough. I've got my power supply set to 12.1 volts right now, and as we test it, you can see we're right at 12.1 volts. So certainly accurate enough for this amateur. But when we're doing things like antenna builds or coax or whatever, uh, you gotta have continuity. It's got the audio continuity there that I, uh, that I really like. So this meter is fantastic. It also comes with this little accessory bag. You can throw everything in there. Comes with a little temperature sensor that you connect to these two ports here and switch it to temperature if you need to take some temperature readings. It also comes with some of these little alligator clips that you're just gonna plug the probes into here, like such. So you can just clip this to bare wires or something if you need to and take readings that way. It's just, it's, it's a really nice meter. And on the back, it's got a little kickstand for viewing like that. It has a backlight. If we long press this, you get a light there. It's just, I mean, it, there's more functions on here than I know how to use, but uh, it's just a great meter. It's very, very tough. I've dropped this thing, I can't tell you how many times, takes a beating. And it also has these little slots here for our probes to keep everything nice and tidy. And that just lives here in this bench in the drawer. And I absolutely love it. Next, I have this Kiwitz clamp meter. This is the HT206D. You'll see this in like every one of my battery review videos. This is what I use for measuring the current because it has this clamp meter. This will do current for uh, DC and I believe AC as well. That's primarily what I use it for. It can do up to 600 amps of current or you can lower it down to 60 amps. Does all the, you know, all the continuity things you'd want it to do. I might have to change that, there we are. So, not auto. You need to do different things with it, but it's pretty accurate as well. Probably not as accurate as the uh, Klein one there, but let's go ahead and test it with the power supply so you can see it's only showing 12.09, 12.08, so close enough. I mean, this was, I think I paid under $50 for this. So pretty good meter. I think it's got uh, the non -cat no contact voltage there. We just long press this button 
And then you can see the NCV there. And if I just get this close, right now it's by an electrical outlet. You can hear it beeping. So you can find live circuits there in the wall with that. So pretty cool meter, pretty inexpensive. And lastly is a meter that I keep in my car. It's this Tesman. This thing is stupid cheap. I think I paid $10 for this. They're like $17 now on Amazon, but this just stays in my car. If I need a meter while I'm out in the field or driving around terrorizing the neighborhood and I need to check voltage on something, you've got it. So this is totally auto. It's gonna do AC, DC, um, you know, continuity, no contact, voltage, all that stuff. So we just long press this button and we get this auto range. So if we wanna test continuity, there you go, it just automatically does that. If I wanna test voltage on my power supply, there we are, we can see 12.17 volts, just does it automatically. If I wanna stick it in an electrical socket, we can see 122 volts there. So AC to DC, no problem. Just like that, it just automatically senses it. It's a cool little meter. This thing comes off if you don't wanna have the ruggedized protection. Um, here's the no contact voltage. I think if we long press that there and I'll put this next to an outlet. You can see I'm close, so it's kind of beeping slowly. And now when I'm really like right on it, it beeps faster. So that's pretty neat. There's a little, there's a little like Baofeng flashlight on the back, you know. It's not the greatest meter, it's not the most accurate, but it's accurate enough. And for the $10 that I paid for this, which 17 now, this literally just lives in my car. And anytime I need a meter, that's what I have. And then it comes with, comes with a little bag and your meters and that's it. It's just very, very basic, but it works. So hopefully that helps answer your question. I'm sorry I don't have any fancy fluke meters for you, but I'm an amateur radio operator and I think these are all uh, well within line of what um, accuracy we could expect in amateur radio. So there you go. I hope that helps. And thanks so much for your support on Patreon. And thanks for writing in. I appreciate it. Lastly, we've got another question about one of my absolute favorite antennas, the Yesu ATOS. Let's check it out. So this viewer says, recently started using the ATOS 120 antenna mounted off the balcony railing of my fourth floor apartment here in Austin, Texas. Well, you got the height up there on the fourth floor. That's great. I'm driving my antenna with the Yesu 857, and so far my experiences have been very good. From the balcony rail, I do struggle to have sufficient counterpoise installation. Was not satisfied with the antenna performance when I tried to connect the system to the metal balcony railing, hoping it would provide a good counterpoise. So I developed counterpoise wiring, stringing three wires each side of the antenna at thir 13 feet long, and the third wire dangling straight down from the base of the antenna. This one's only six feet long as it would hang down to the neighbor's balcony below if it were any longer. With the wires, the antenna tunes 40 through 10. The only indication of SWR I'm able to watch is the bar graph on the display of my radio. Problem, when the antenna tunes uh, and comes to an SWR null, the system will slew on through the null and SWR indication rises. I am able, of course, to watch and manually stop the tuning process when I see it obtain the null, and operating has been successful with contacts made on each band. Well, that's good. Would you guess that my RF ground is not sufficient for the tuning to stop on its own when it sees the null? Uh, and also, I would like an opinion on this. If I installed an external SWR meter right behind the radio trying to get a better reading of the SWR, will that negatively affect the antenna control drive voltage and or damage the external SWR meter? So let's talk about the first question first. The ATOS is a fantastic antenna, but it does need a good ground plane. And I actually had a similar question to this. Uh, I think back in April, I did a video on, can you use the ATOS for portable? I set that antenna up on a fiberglass mast with radials, and I was using three bunches of five, two and a half meter radials. So a whole heck of a lot of radials, and they look like this. This is different, but same idea. So you're taking a bunch of radials and connecting them to one connector. And I had three of these. In my case, there were five wires connected. So I had 15 wires 
that were two and a half meters each, which translates to about 137 feet of total wire. The length of each individual wire doesn't matter so much as the total amount of wire out. This is the wire for my DX Commander. I use five sets of these. You gotta get more radials out because you only have um, 30 some odd feet total. You need more than that. Now you don't have the length to droop them down your balcony, but you can cut a whole bunch of wire and make them short and connect them to your antenna. And I suspect that will get you a whole heck of a lot better results because what's happening is your ATOS isn't stopping where it sees a null because I suspect your SWR is, is too high so it never stops. We don't know what the actual dip is in your email because we, we didn't include any SWR readings, but I suspect that's the problem and the solution would be to add more radials. Now, as far as hooking up an SWR meter in line with the ATOS, I'm kind of curious about that too. So let's hop out to the car and see what happens. Now, before we get to this SWR meter, I just want to make one comment. The ATOS should stop with a reasonable SWR, but if it doesn't, so for example, I don't have the greatest match on six meters in my car, but watch what happens when we get a match and watch what I can do. So we got about a two to one audio, about a two to one SWR. But if I hold down the PTT, I can use the down or the up arrows to fine tune that. So now the SWR is getting higher. There we are. Perfect 1.1 to 1 match. Or close enough. So you can do that to fine tune your radio. So we successfully tuned up on 10 meters with the antenna connected directly to the radio as we would expect. Let's see what happens if we try to tune up with an SWR meter in line. Nothing's happening at all. And now it doesn't work. Nothing's broken, mind you. It's just not working. No bands, nothing. At least with this meter, you can't plug it in in line between the radio and the antenna. There, I mean, there could be some circuitry in here that's grounding something that's not allowing the ATOS to work, but the ATOS is power over coax. So I'm guessing because of that fact, something is interacting with the watt meter. Again, nothing's broken and I'll show you. I'm gonna plug the radio back directly to the antenna and we'll see what happens. Now we're connected back up directly to the antenna. Let's hit the tune button. And the antenna's moving. We're not putting power out, so I suspect we've confused the antenna, which means that we have to let it go through its process of kind of finding itself. And basically what's happening right now, the antenna's raising up, the ATS light is blinking, but nothing's happening here. We need to let this go for just a solid minute, like a literal 60 seconds, and everything should kind of recalibrate, if you will. So I'll cut to uh, when that is doing that, but I'm just gonna leave this doing exactly what it's doing. The antenna is all the way up, it's maxed out, but it will fix itself. And there we are. Now we have the high SWR, the power indicator, or the SWR in this case, and the antenna is lowering and it should stop when we see a respectable SWR. And there we are. 1.3 to 1. Gotta love it. So there we go. Now, hopefully, you will be able to get your ATOS working better, and we know that, at least in my case, with my SWR meter, it doesn't work, although nothing got broken, so no harm, no foul. So thanks so much for writing in, and guys, if you have amateur radio-related questions for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. I would love to hear from you, and so would Satan. He's very bored by all of your questions, but I love him. So <laughs> that's all we got for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching Ham Radio 2. My name is Mike, k 8 73 for now.